Virtual Desktop is the one essential app you need to play all your PC VR games wirelessly on your MetaQuest, Pico, or Play for Dream headset. I use it to play all my standalone VR games like Forefront, Into the Radius 2, and Valve's masterpiece, Half-Life Alex. The process is the same for all the headsets I've mentioned, but I will be using my MetaQuest 3 to show you all the steps, as this, along with the Quest 2, is probably the most numerous and most used headset on the Steam VR ecosystem. Now, I've done a lot of virtual desktops on my channel, but I've never done a project as in-depth as this. I'm going to show you how to buy and install the app onto your headset, take you through all the essential settings in headset and on the PC streamer, which Kodak is best for you, the perfect hardware setup for optimum performance, then talk you through the most common problems. Who needs a Steam frame, eh? Let's get straight into it then, and remember, we're born to respawn. <laughs> Virtual desktop headset app and PC stream app. First things first, and you must buy the Virtual Desktop app from within your headset. Go to the storefront, search for Virtual Desktop and purchase it. The app currently costs £18.99 in the UK, but if you are purchasing on the Meta family of VR headsets, you can get a further 10% discount if you use my code MACINVR at checkout. Next step, open a browser window on your PC, search for Virtual Desktop, download and install the free Stream app. This essential app creates a virtual bridge using your existing Wi-Fi to your PC and falls it into thinking it's hardwired. Genius! On the account page, you must enter your Meta, Pico, Google, Viveport or Play for Dream username. I will go through the essential settings next in the video, but that's it as far as installing the app on your headset and PC. How easy was that? In headset settings. Make sure the streamer app is running on your PC, pop on your headset and fire up Virtual Desktop. If it's your first time, you will get a brief audio introduction, then you will see this screen. Top right will tell you which Wi-Fi channel, current bitrate, IP address and PC you are connected to. If you have more than one PC running Virtual Desktop, make sure you are connected to the right one. And you can thank my friend Surgical for that because he's an idiot. <laughs> I will cover connection issues later in the video, but if your PC and headset are on the same network, you should be golden. Environment tab changes your view. I quite like the modern apartment, but this is down to your own personal choice. Your games tab will show all your Steam VR, Oculus and Vive port titles. To launch a game, either open Steam VR via the button or just click directly on the game and virtual desktop will open it for you. Input shows you which buttons do what in the app, and the settings tab is only for your PC and in-headset display. It has nothing to do with your games, but I would recommend you uncheck the Use Optimal Resolution tab. It can screw up your PC monitor settings, especially if you run twin displays, like I do. The streaming tab is the most important one, and this is where you should copy my settings. Just for reference, this is a baseline setup to get you going. You can fiddle with these settings to your heart's content, but if it all goes wrong, just hit the reset to default button bottom left and all your tampering will be undone. VR graphics quality. Easy this one. Just pick the graphics card that is nearest to the one you have. If you are running a GTX 9070, I'm, a potato. I'm running an RTX 5090. So, Godlike. VR frame rate depends on the game. I run my sim racing games at 72 FPS, but I will run more competitive multiplayer games like Forefront Holy at 120 shit. FPS for those quicker Twitch moments. VR bitrate and sharpening. Just leave these settings as is for the moment. I will cover this in the PC streamer app settings. VR pass-through allows limited pass-through in PC games, but I'll be honest, I've never used it, so you can play around with it if you want, but I leave these settings alone. Gamma, leave at default 1.0. Synchronous space warp. This is an ingenious little algorithm that can help you maintain frame rate if your PC is struggling to keep up. For example, if you have your frame rate set to 90 FPS, but you are getting frame drops, Turn this on and Virtual Desktop will reduce the frame rate to 45 FPS. Then extrapolate an intermediate frame, which you will insert between generated frames to raise your frame rate back to 90 FPS. That is a very simple explanation of a very clever process, but 
It isn't perfect and can cause ghosting and reprojection in some games. I find it's better to adjust in-game graphics to hit your preferred frame rate and very rarely use this, though it is a pretty handy tool. Snapdragon Game Super Resolution. What is it? Snapdragon GSR is a single pass spatial aware super resolution technique developed by the Qualcomm Snapdragon Studios to achieve optimal super scaling quality at the best performance and power savings. Now that's a direct quote from Qualcomm and it's a no brainer. The Qualcomm XR2 chip in your headset has this feature built in and does not affect performance in any way. So you may as well use it. Video buffering. If you are getting micro stutters, you can tick this box, but it does add a modicum of latency. I prefer not to use it as my setup is optimized for wireless streaming, but it is another tool available to you if you have that specific problem. Center to play space, track controllers and forward tracking data to PC. Just copy my settings. Increase color vibrance. I have this ticked as I think it makes the games more colorful and vibrant. Increase video nominal range. This setting is supposed to make your blacks blacker but I find it makes games way too dark for me. It's personal preference, but I leave this unchecked. Show performance overlay. Very handy tool for checking how well your system is running. It will show your FPS, latency, bitrate, runtime, headset on the left, some common settings on the right, but most importantly, your game encoding network decoding latency. Great for seeing if your Wi-Fi is getting bottlenecked. If this is checked and you see the overlay, you can toggle it on and off by clicking the left, right thumbsticks together. Top tip there for you. Bottom right is the reset to default button if it's all gone a bit P-Tong. PC Stream app. The first thing I would recommend here is to go to the About tab and check for interfering apps. Third-party antivirus software is notorious for getting in the way of virtual desktop, so turn that crap off and rely on Windows Defender. Secondly, click the Check for Updates tab as running different versions of virtual desktop on your PC and headset will cause connection issues. Now, accounts. You need to input your Meta, Pico, Play for Dream or Viveport account IDs here. If you don't, your games will not show up in headset on the Games tab. Bindings. You can assign hotkeys here for your keyboard. Options. This is the most important page as it will determine a multitude of settings. I will talk about codecs next, but you can just leave this on automatic for the time being. Adaptive quantization and two-pass encoding. One of the biggest arguments I hear from PC elitists is that playing your games wirelessly causes compression artifacts, which can be true, but now Virtual Desktop has these two clever options that get rid of most, if not all, compression from the encoding-decoding sequence. You should have these two ticked unless your PC is really struggling performance-wise, then uncheck two-pass encoding as it does eat into your PC headroom a bit. OpenXR Runtime. You can leave this on automatic if you wish, or you can choose from two options. Selecting SteamVR will give you the full raft of features from this app, but it can be quite resource-hungry. VDXR is Virtual Desktop's own runtime and bypasses SteamVR completely to eke out more performance, but you will not have access to any Steam apps that you may use like FPS VR Overlay or Live Streaming Kit. This one is up to you. I do a ton of live streams on YouTube, so need to use these apps, but performance isn't a problem with my monster PC. Leave the next two options as they are and look at the checkboxes on the right. Copy my settings, except for automatically adjust bitrate. Guy Godin, the developer of Virtual Desktop, recommends you leave this box checked, but if you are an advanced user, you can uncheck this and manually adjust your bitrate in the streamer tab on your headset. Now, this always causes controversy in my Virtual Desktop videos, but remember, this is just a guide for baseline settings. If you are an experienced and comfortable with the app, fiddle away to your heart's content and don't have a meltdown in the comments. Advanced. This is where the secret source is hidden away and these settings are very powerful tools for squeezing every drop of performance from your PC, especially if it's not a high-end rig. Now, I've done a whole video on this subject here, just so you know how powerful it can be. But just for brevity, I'll quickly explain what they do and my recommended starting point. Field of view tangent sliders basically reduces the number of pixels that your PC has to render in the horizontal and vertical planes. 
It is without doubt Virtual Desktop's most powerful tool and has major performance gains, but can cause issues with black bars encroaching in your in-headset FOV. Your baseline settings should start at 85% horizontal and 75% vertical. These are the settings that gave me the most bang for my buck, but if you see black bars in your headset, increase the sliders until they are gone or leave them if you can handle it. Up to you. VDXR render resolution is similar to Steam VR resolution, but you can adjust and fine tune this easier in the streamer tab using the VR graphics settings that we already discussed. So I find it's best to leave this alone currently. Additional sharpening adds CAS or contrast adaptive sharpening prior to encoding. It is set at 75%. I have it at 100%. Again, it's up to you. Have a play around because you can't break it. Also, don't forget to tick the box to turn it on. Otherwise, it isn't on. FOV Stencil removes the pixels from the extreme edge of your vision for a modest performance gain, but you cannot use it if you have the FOV Tangent Sliders active. Boost Gain Priority should only be used if you are suffering from game freezes or stuttering as it increases the GPU priority of your game. Now, I don't have this problem, so I don't have it ticked. Codex. Again, I have done a whole video on this subject, as it can be quite in-depth, but you can leave it on automatic if you wish. To summarise, H.264, H.264+, Plus, HEVC or H.265, as it is also known, are older codecs. These will give you lower latency, but less graphical fidelity. HEVC 10-bit and AV1 10-bit are more modern codecs and will slightly increase latency, but improve visual fidelity. My preference is AV1 10-bit on my very high-end rig with my Wi-Fi set up specifically for virtual desktop. I can feel all the keyboard warriors starting to type as I say that, but please remember, this is a video for beginners upwards. My full breakdown of codec testing with results is in the video I mentioned two sentences ago. Perfect hardware setup for optimum performance. Virtual desktop needs to be on a 5 gigahertz or 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi channel with nothing else connected to it. Any interference will cause issues. So no phones, tablets, watches, other computers, streaming TV services and the like are all no. The best option is to have a dedicated router. Yes, I'm English and we pronounce it router. In the UK, a router is for cutting wood, just so you know. Anyway, a dedicated router set up as an access point, password protected and not available to any other device will give you a perfect wireless experience. I have this TP-Link Archer BE700 tri-band Wi-Fi 7 device, but that is overkill. Any Wi-Fi 5, 6 or 6E router will be suitable. Connect this to your ISP router via an Ethernet cable, then connect your headset to this device's Wi-Fi for optimum wireless game streaming. Common problems. Well, hopefully you should be up and running by now, but here is a list of common problems and how to get around them. Can't install virtual desktop. It's your antivirus software. Turn it off, install it, then turn it back on again. Sorted. Virtual desktop cannot find your PC. First, your PC and headset must be on the same network. Your PC must be connected to your router by an ethernet cable and your headset must be connected to that device's Wi-Fi. Secondly, check that you are running the most recent version of Virtual Desktop on your PC and headset. On the PC Streamer tab, go to the About tab and check for updates. The version number is here. Open Virtual Desktop, go to your library, find Virtual Desktop, click the three dots here and update if necessary. The current version number is here on the In Headset menu. Is the game playing in flat screen mode? Double tap the left meta button to bring up the virtual desktop menu, then switch to VR mode. Poor frame rate or black bars when you move your head. Open the performance overlay in the streamer tab and check your overall latency. Look at the game, encode, network and decoding latency. Are any showing red or yellow? Go to the computer tab in your headset menu and check the bit rate. Is it lower than 400 megabits per second? It's probably a Wi-Fi issue. Lastly, and this has happened to me recently, Virtual Desktop couldn't find my PC even after checking all of the above. So I just restarted my headset and PC, then everything worked fine. 
If you have any problems that I haven't listed above or have any questions about Virtual Desktop, please join my Discord server and head over to the Virtual Desktop helpline. If I'm not there, one of my experienced members will usually be able to help you out. I've put a link in the description down below. Well, that's it. My comprehensive guide to all things Virtual Desktop. Remember, if you fancy picking up a copy of this incredible app on a Meta headset, please use my discount code MACINVR for 10% off the purchase price. As always, what do you think? Are you a fan of wireless PC VR gaming? Do you use Virtual Desktop already? Do you prefer another wireless streaming app like Airlink or Steam Link? You know the drill. Get involved and comment down below. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. If you love this content, please join my channel membership like these lovely people did. You get custom badges, emojis, and early access to most of my content. If you want to watch more content from me, please click here or here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.